For the next presentation, it's the last part of our training. And uh, let me introduce Michal Karpišek, our colleague, which is an experienced ELISA researcher, but he's also involved in clinical validations, and he's a coordinator of one of our uh, Horizon 2020 project. And the presentation will be focused on inflammation and infectious diseases with a focus on human MXI protein, which is more also related to the, to the clinic. So the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Martina, for the introduction. Uh, in this presentation, I would like uh, to uh, present very, very few markers uh, of inflammation and infection with a specific focus on uh, human MXA protein uh, ELISA and its application. I hope so. I will be able to show you that uh, MXA uh, protein is really unique and useful uh, laboratory parameter. I will start uh, with clinical background and related uh, future products. Uh, I will continue with a uh, few uh, clinical applications for MXA uh, protein and consequently I will uh, review uh, our competitors on that field and highlight key points for important for uh, marketing and sales. Uh, among all issues discussed now in uh, inflammation and uh, infection, I have selected only two uh, I will mention today. The first one uh, comes from units of intensive care and uh, is related uh, to differential uh, diagnosis between uh, non-infectious sears uh, and uh, infectious sears, which is called sepsis. In a patients uh, after surgery or trauma, there is a risk of bacterial or viral infection and therefore uh, accurate uh, diagnos diagnostics uh, and on-time diagnostics can provide relevant information to save human life. The good laboratory practice involves determination procalcitonin and uh, presepsin uh, in that case, and as you can see, uh, they are both uh, bacterial, they are marker of bacterial infection. The second topic I would like to highlight uh, is differential diagnosis uh, between a viral and bacterial infection in patients with uh, upper respiratory tract infections, where is a CRP used as a common uh, laboratory parameter. There are uh, expected values for procalcitonin, presepsin, and uh, CRP. And uh, you can see a cutoff value for procalcitonin, it is 2 nanogram per ml. For presepsin, it is 337 picogram per ml. And for CRP, it's good to know uh, that uh, in normal, uh, there are expected values between 0 and 5 milligram per liter. In patients with viral infection, there are typical values between 5 and 12, uh, 20 milligram per liter. And for those uh, patients with the bacterial infection, there are typical values over 50 milligram per ml. On this picture, you can see kinetic profiles uh, for all those mentioned uh, parameters. And from this uh, graph, it's clear that the earliest marker released under bacterial infection is uh, presepsin. This is this line. And there are also, this gray line is, belongs to CRP uh, level in patient uh, with viral infection. And this orange, red orange, it's typical CRP value uh, in patient with bacterial infection. For the values, uh, CRP values over 50 milligram per uh, liter, uh, you can say, uh, okay, this patient has a bacterial infection and you can prescribe antibiotics. But in case the CRP level is under 50 milligram per ml, uh, there are several options you can consider. The first one is repeated measurement uh, of CRP or you can measure uh, in one of uh, setting test uh, CRP plus procalcitonin 
And what we recommend uh, is also to determine CRP plus procalcitonin plus MXA. The reason is uh, that in those uh, very, level, very low uh, level of CRP, there might be either viral infection or early stage of bacterial infection. Therefore, the CRP value is not sufficient information. In our portfolio, <coughs> on the website, you can find 82 ELISA kits and at least two microRNA immunoassays. Uh, on the right side, you can see our bestsellers. Uh, there are interleukins or surfactant proteins and human MXA uh, ELISA kit as well. Human MXA ELISA was uh, launched in 2013 and it is therefore still for research use only. The other products, I mean procalcitonin or CRP, are CEIVD labeled. And uh, even if we are sure that we cannot compete uh, to routine analyzers, uh, they are still suitable for small clinical studies, especially together uh, with uh, MXA assay. We also offer some unique uh, products uh, such as canine uh, procalcitonin, or we have uh, high sensitivity CRP assays uh, for human or canine or mouse or rat species. To complete clinical background, I will share more information about uh, MXA protein. It is actually human myxovirus resistance protein 1, and it is human cytosolic protein. Sometimes uh, if people can hear uh, myxovirus, they think, okay, uh, it is a uh, viral protein, but that's not true. This is human protein. This is very crucial information for customers. It is expressed in uh, many tissues and very important for diagnostics, uh, also in blood mononuclear cells. And therefore, we recommend to sell those cells and to prepare whole human blood cell lysates for MXA measurement. Human <coughs> MXA protein uh, is a product of the gene MX1. And uh, this gene is upregulated in response to interferon alpha and beta or directly by viruses. Uh, biological activity is based on oligomers created by uh, MXA, which interact uh, with viral nucleocapsid and uh, inactivate it. MXA is upregulated interferons uh, and therefore it is a marker of uh, viral infection or can be used uh, for monitoring of treatment patient uh, with treated uh, on interferon beta therapy. There are actually two options. The first one is to determine interferon bioactivity and the second one is uh, neutralizing antibody development. Uh, interferon bioactivity is actually a phenomenon uh, based on the fact that half-life of interferon is about uh, four hours in comparison to the MXA, which is two and a half uh, days, and therefore uh, provide more robust results. About neutralizing antibodies, I will uh, talk later on, so you will get uh, more detailed information. As I said, uh, MXA protein is a marker of viral infection and therefore can be used uh, for differential diagnostics, uh, diagnostic uh, between viral and bacterial infections. We are proud that we hold a license from the company Kiowa, who actually uh, developed the assay and uh, published very nice publication in 2012. And uh, we received the license and therefore we use uh, the same antibodies, uh, the same dilution buffer, uh, the same detection system. Kiowa also evaluated our standards, our internal control, and uh, therefore uh, we can call this uh, publication as a reference on our product as well. In that publication, they introduced the immunosay itself and also presented uh, some clinical results uh, in patients with uh, upper respiratory tract infection. And as you can see, 
And the marker can differentiate between patient with viral infection and uh, bacterial infection with the cutoff value 40 nanogram per ml. There is a question whether it makes sense to differ, differ between viral and uh, bacterial infection uh, in all patients. And uh, my answer is no. Uh, but there are still uh, groups of patients uh, which can benefit from this differential diagnosis very much. Good example are newborns and uh, infants with upper respiratory tract infections. And the reason is that uh, you can find viral infection six, seven times uh, more often than uh, bacterial infections. And therefore, antibiotics uh, treatment is overused in this group. Moreover, antibiotics can damage uh, immaturate immunity system. And moreover, uh, in infants, uh, you can find very low uh, interleukin, uh, uh, interleukins levels or unusual uh, CRP values. Therefore, CRP measurement do not provide uh, accurate uh, diagnostics and uh, new or improved diagnostic, uh, diagnostic is uh, required. The solution, and we believe that the solution is to use our MXA uh, ELISA kit. Uh, targeted users are therefore uh, neonatal or pediatric centers, or it can be also pharmaceutical companies uh, who develop or produce uh, antibiotics or antiviral drugs. Uh, another application is based on <coughs> monitoring of patients treated uh, with uh, interferon beta. Typical case uh, are patients with multiple sclerosis, uh, which uh, take uh, interferon beta as a first-line drug. Here in Europe, it is produced uh, by several companies like Biogen, uh, Bayer, Novartis, uh, or Merck. And uh, therefore, they can be potential users as well to determine bioactivity of uh, interferon uh, beta. But there is not only uh, pharmacology uh, or a professional uh, society interest, uh, there is also a guideline uh, published by European Medicines Agency for interferon uh, beta treatment. Uh, the agency recommends uh, to use uh, specifically MXA uh, protein uh, for pharmacokinetics or uh, pharmacodynamics measurements. And also mention MXA protein or MXA assay to determine neutralizing uh, antibody. Right now is the point to explain what, is, uh, what neutralizing antibodies are. In patients who take uh, interferon as a drug, develop in 4-5% five, five of them autoantibodies against interferon, and they actually take drug, but they are not treated at the end. And this is a very dangerous situation for them. Therefore, you have monitor neutralize presence of neutralizing antibody in patient treated with interferons. Very good example how to use MXA marker for bioactivity determination and neutralizing antibody assessment uh, is the publication from the journal International Immunopharmacology published uh, recently in September 2018. And it was published actually by the group from pharmaceutical company who wanted to enter EU market with the drug called Resigen. And I should share uh, that they uh, used our ELISA kit in this publication. So it is very good reference uh, on it. Uh, and you can find the procedure how to customers can follow. At the end, uh, the drug already received uh, the approval and can be used in vivo in Europe. In more details, how to monitor neutralizing uh, antibodies. In patients who are treated with interferons, after the first dose, MXA level is raised and keep the level for the whole time of the treatment. In several cases, uh, the 
MXA level goes down, like in this group, and it means uh, that they probably produce autoantibodies and therefore do not react to the treatment and consequently have a very low MXA level. These patients are actually uh, suggested for drug replacement. European Medicines Agency recommends to determine uh, MXA level in every patient treated with interferon and every 12 months. So it means in months 12, 24, 36, etc. Targeted users are therefore uh, either pharmaceutical companies who are producing interferon beta drugs or it might be also clinical centers for uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, in January uh, 2018, uh, it was published a very nice publication which described uh, registries across the European Union. So uh, I have found out uh, the website in this publication uh, uh, on the Czech reg register and uh, uh, on the website of the register I have found out 15 centers for multiple sclerosis. We are going uh, to contact and offer them MXA kit for uh, neutralizing antibody development uh, control. Now I will review our competitors. You can find about uh, 55 different uh, MXA assays on market. Typical example is uh, my biosource. Uh, they offer six or seven different assays at a different price, at a different measuring range, and with different applications. As you can see, uh, the same assay uh, is offered by my Biosource, <laughs> by uh, Lifespan, uh, by Geneway as well, by Biomatic, Aviva, and Abexa as well. So, at the end, there are only two or three producers of the assays and the competition is not so strong. If you remove uh, competitors with very high price per kit, so the list is reduced. If you also remove uh, from the list assays which use improper uh, measuring range, which is quite different from ours, so you will also see a very reduced list of kits. And if you finally remove those uh, with improper application in serum or plasma, because it is intracellular protein, and if you, go, if you want to measure MXA, you have to lyse blood cells and actually prepare whole blood cell lysates for measurement. So, uh, we consider measurement in uh, serum and plasma as a not proper application. And if I remove uh, those companies, so there is only one <laughs> which is relevant <laughs> for this application. Uh, but I should say uh, that our competitor roll us by the quantity. If you can see in BioCompare on Lin Scott or Labome, uh, 55 kits and one of them is from BioVendor, so we have chance 1 to 55 to get a customer. But they do not roll us by the quality. There is uh, another competitor I would like to mention today and this uh, <coughs> lateral flow test from the company Rapid Pathogen Screening. It is US based company and uh, the picture of the rapid test is right here. And you can see the test determine MXA level together with CRP. So this is really good strategy to determine MXA uh, and uh, CRP. And we say also procalcitonin. The test is very simple uh, and you will receive results uh, very fast. On the other hand, the test is not quantitative. It is just qualitative. And I think uh, the test has insufficient sensitivity uh, if you will consider application for neutralizing antibody development monitoring, for example. And finally, the test is or has a very high cost. 
it is maybe double or triple of our price per sample. At the end, I would like to highlight uh, advantages of our assay. It is sandwich assay based on two monocle antibodies. So we believe that we will keep the same clinical sensitivity and specificity for ages. And it will be uh, also possible to transfer this assay on different platforms, including automated analyzers, for example. We have great publications. We have a very good protocol for sample preparation. Uh, it might be uh, done either by the assay buffer present in the kit or customers can prepare it themselves in their lab according to the formula presented in the publication right here. It is our reference. And we have sold over 700 kits without any bad uh, feedback. And uh, I should share that we, have, we can see about 20% annual growth on that item. So this is really promising. In summary, we have a very unique tool for differential diagnosis, viral and bacterial infections, or monitoring of treatment patient with interferons. And uh, we are going to start pay-per-click campaign maybe next week. So if you will contact your potential customers in near future, they should find our advertisement through Google because we uh, use uh, Google AdWords uh, as a tool uh, for the campaign. So thank you for your attention. Do you have any question, please? So, in the European Community Guidelines for measurement of the firm, uh, you have you noticed uh, in other countries the big need of this kit? Uh, what they are doing now? If this is the only one which measures this mm -hmm. tissue, so how do they handle this nowadays? Do they yeah. obey? This? Uh, actually, there is there are two options. You can either measure uh, mRNA or protein. So uh, most of them, they uh, try to measure both. Uh, but uh, I think five years ago, it, they started with uh, mRNA. So this is, uh, this is a method they can use anyway. But there is still a difference between mRNA, which is not so robust, stable, etc., in comparison to our, pro to our protein. We know, it, we know it from our cooperators from hospital. Uh, there is uh, one in Prague, uh, they started with mRNA, uh, they are really famous on that topic and uh, in face-to-face -face talking they told me we don't more want to use mRNA and want your uh, protein assay. But the costs, the price, uh, uh, comparing the mRNA testing, comparing to your kit. Um, the truth is uh, that in Germany it is a part of additional insurance, health insurance. So it is covered, for, for some countries it is covered by uh, additional insurance, but not in the Czech Republic and probably not in Poland. Mm -hmm. So therefore in Czech Republic or in Poland uh, there is the only chance uh, that a patient will pay for this uh, investigation uh, okay. directly. I, but if you if you consider if you if you have if you have multiple sclerosis, and if you have chance to get information that uh, your drug does not work, uh, and uh, you can lose one or two years uh, to get the information from clinicians that your behavior is worse and worse, and you cannot get back, in that situation you will be happy to pay, uh, let's say, uh, ten euro for the for the measurement. Of course. The doctors has to be convinced yeah. to do this to their As patients well. and to offer yeah. this. Yeah. This yeah. Is okay. But yeah, but the very crucial information is that Germany, they are, every time they are a, a few years uh, in front of us, so uh, uh, they already have implemented in their additional insurance. So we expect the same in the Central Europe as well. Okay. Our job is to inform the, the doctors. 
do they know, the doctors who uh, take care about multiple sclerosis patients? Do they know? Not, not well. Not well, uh, and we are we are trying to start the campaign uh, first, and uh, therefore I'm talking uh, about it today. And uh, we have uh, running uh, more clinician studies, which can support uh, on the publications. Uh, and on the publication, we will present uh, some results. So we will support this request uh, from customers. But it is run for years. It is not uh, for the next month. Okay. I would also mention that. <clears throat> that okay, our, our kit is maybe the only one on the market. On the other hand, as the uh, pharmaceutical companies has to test their drugs for that uh, <coughs> bioactivity, etc., all the big uh, pharmaceutical companies have their own high quality indoor uh, ELISA kits or immunoassay tests for the for the protein measurement, not, not RNA, but they are not commercial. Available. They, they, they do, they use that only for their development uh, purpose, but they, they do not sell that. Yeah, but so, so yeah. pharmaceutical companies know about the need and know about the use of the test. It's absolutely true. Every, co every company, Merck uh, f or the others, actually have, have in-house in assays. They measure, me they measure it but they uh, don't share it with the other comp actually competitors. It's normal, they don't share. If they can yeah. still sell the interference, <coughs> it's good for them. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> they don't want to support competitors, <laughs> it's clear. But if you would like to enter uh, this community uh, and you, you don't have essay for that, uh, so um, our kit is a really good chance, as I have uh, given example. And uh, if you would like also compare uh, the drugs between, uh, it, it needn't to be done by the pharmaceutical company, but the, the centers. They simply want to know, uh, want to tighter uh, the drugs and compare them. Uh, f for example, drug number one, I have to use one unit, uh, drug number two, five units to get the similar results. So this is also option.